What's up, bar listeners? It's your boy. And before we jump into this awesome bar podcast you're about to listen to, I want to tell you about something that's coming. October 27th, the bar podcast is going to start to release exclusive content. Yes, that's exclusive content for subscribers only. You'll continue to get the regular bar podcast every Tuesday, your favorite podcast, but also you'll get some new releases. Um, And what this is going to look like is we're going to call it Inside the Bar. And what that means is we're going to have the regular 30 minute conversation with our guests with our awesome guests we have every week. And then I'm asking my guests to stay on a little bit longer to ask more questions for me to ask them questions, them to ask me questions, kind of a behind the scenes green room feel. So if you want to be a part of those conversations, you want to hear that and also be exposed to all the exclusive exclusive things that I'm going to release, then sign up from now until October 27th for only five dollars a month is five dollars a month will get you uh, exclusive content access as well as many other opportunities. Um, After October 27th, the price will go up, but I want to let you guys know because you are the faithful bar listeners and I want to be faithful to you guys. So make sure you go into the show notes, click on the link and sign up for uh, Inside the Bar, the bar exclusive content. God bless. To the bar, come on and pull up a seat and open up your Bible. What a wonderful feast! The living bread, and we're discussing what it means for the streets, the inner cities, and the burbs, and every person we meet. This is where we challenge worldviews that we hear from world news. In light of the scripture, we are here to serve you. We're your source for resources to help you on your way as you battle mean forces. This is for the people who can see the importance of sound theology and the scripture that support it. And this is for the truth lovers, biblically reforming, preaching Christ to the nations. Yeah, welcome to the the Reformation, yeah. The Bar, Biblical and Reformed. Welcome everybody to The Bar. It's your boy Dwayne in the building. Right back in here another Tuesday. Super excited as always to be coming through your speakers, through your earbuds, where you listen to The Bar. We're grateful that you're listening. And I love to start every show off by thanking the listeners. Appreciate you guys being uh, just who you are, man. Buying bar gear, subscribing to the page, writing reviews. You just do an awesome job. And I really appreciate that. Um, this make this uh, fun. That makes this fun. That makes this uh, enjoyable. Even when I feel down or I'm like, man, I got to upload another one. But I remember you great listeners and I really appreciate you guys doing that. And like I do every Tuesday, I bring you an awesome guest. Uh, this guest uh, I've been watching for a while. I've been trying to get him on the show for a while. Uh, and, and I had to pull a few uh, big dog strings to, to make it happen. But we have on today none other than my brother, Chris Roseborough. How are you doing today, sir? Doing great. How about how about yourself? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. Glad to have you on the show. Super excited. And uh, and so I had uh, 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 I called some people call him their favorite Lutheran on on my show last week, and I said, "Well, my favorite Lutheran is Chris." So you you gotta you know you gotta come really hard to take Chris' place, man. So I'm excited to have you. Uh, that finally my listeners can hear my favorite Lutheran. But Chris, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to my listeners. Sure. Uh, I am uh, I am Pastor uh, Chris Rosebro. I am a Lutheran pastor, a confessional Lutheran pastor. Sometimes people go, oh, you're a Lutheran. That means you you are like for, you know, gay marriage and women's ordination. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> so th- those people, th- we call them Lutherans in, la- in name only. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're, that's a strange breed of uh, Lutheran. But yes, I'm a confessional <laughs> Lutheran pastor. I pastor Kongsvinger Lutheran Church in Oslo, Minnesota, don't you know? And, uh, and I'm also the, uh, I also do a YouTube, uh, channel called fighting for the faith. And, uh, we've put our uh, podcast, uh, not on ice forever, but we are, we're kind of reworking it and retooling it, how it's going to work. So I did a podcast, uh, called fighting for the faith for the better part of 12 years. And, uh, and so we've migrated over to YouTube and now we're trying to figure out what to do with the podcast. Cause it's still a powerful medium, but, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, the uh, the work that goes into creating the podcast has been, uh, let's just say, challenging as my pastoral responsibilities have <laughs> increased. So, right, I can imagine that. I can imagine that. I remember you telling me that when we were able to talk briefly on the phone. So let's start with uh, the pastor inside. Um, like I told you, I like to do what we call a local pastor spotlight. And you mentioned like how 
uh, I guess, how often you have to minister. Let's just talk about, you know, a day in the life of Pastor Chris. Uh, you know, what does that look like? Uh, what, what's your congregation uh, um, dynamic and maybe even some of the challenges with it? Okay, so uh, my my uh, initial call is to Kongsvinger Lutheran Church. It's in rural Oslo, Minnesota. On any given Sunday, maybe 35 people on a good Sunday, over 40. Um, and so it, it's a small congregation. Um, but then on top of that, I'm also uh, the interim pastor at another uh, church, a uh, confessional Lutheran church in Radium, Minnesota, and the name of that is Emmanuel Lutheran Church. That's a church that's in the uh, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And then um, I also spend my Saturdays uh, doing work with uh, a group called the Aletheia Lutheran International Evangelical Synod and helping them with their church planting. And uh, and they're trying to leverage Internet technologies as it relates to that. So, um, so my weekends, Saturday, Sunday, are completely slammed is the mm-hmm. best way. Uh, you know, so pretty much starting at like six in the morning on Saturday, I don't get to breathe again until roughly five o'clock on Sunday night. Wow. Uh, but uh, so then along with that, you know, you you have people who want to meet with you for the purpose of, you know, counseling or needing pastoral care. Uh, so I go and visit my shut ins, uh, bring them the word and sacrament. Uh, and then on, uh, and on top of that, you still have to stay in the word, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and so the, well, there's this really funny thing that people think that uh, pastors like only work one hour a day. Man, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, to the untrained observer, that's how that looks. Uh, but uh, so uh, uh, so aside from my pastoral responsibilities, then obviously you have uh, you have to do sermon prep. I'm a, a firm believer that you need to, whatever tra- uh, text you're working on, you need to have a rough translation of that text so that you're rightly handling God's Word. You do not want uh, to mishandle God's Word. That is a big no-no, not not merely to the congregation, but before God. You don't want to make promises for God that He hasn't made. You don't want to mishandle His Word. The whole point of studying and showing yourself approved as a workman who need not blush with embarrassment is so that you can rightly handle the word of truth. That's, mm-hmm. that's part of it. And then, uh, and, and so that you got that. I'm also, uh, teaching a seminary class online. And then on top of that is fighting for the faith, uh, the YouTube channel. <laughs> so, uh, it, it, pretty much I, um, yeah, I don't really get a lot of downtime. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> obviously, obviously. Wow, that is amazing. I mean, the, the, that is a lot of stuff. Uh, I, I love the joke about the pastor only works one hour a week. I'm sure a lot of pastors laughed at that one because, that you know, that is definitely not the case. Um, and that that's amazing because... You know, I I know about you know um, YouTube and and how to you know do a good production and, and good quality. And I know when you find a groove, it can become pretty easy. But it still takes time. It yep. takes research that you know and all of that. So before we jump into that, just um back up and give me kind of a background or a genesis of fighting for the faith. Where did it start? Why did it start? Yep. And uh, and and all of that good stuff. Okay, so my original theological training is in Christian apologetics. Mm. Um, I spent some time in the uh, charismatic movement in a in a uh, group known as the Latter Rain, which is kind of way out there on the uh, uh, the the lunatic fringe of the charismatic. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. My wife and I got swept up into that. Prior to that, we were Nazarenes. And the best way I can summarize it quickly is to say that God was merciful to us, and uh, and through the word of God in the mouth of a of a very devout woman was able to bring us out of the uh, latter rain movement. And when my wife and I came out, we kind of felt so deceived and betrayed mm-hmm. uh, by people who were supposed to be teaching us the scriptures and were representatives of Christ. And so uh, rather than abandon Christianity, which was one of the options on the table for us, sure, uh, we, uh, you know, I, I basically said to my wife, I said, I think the Bible's true, but I'm pretty convinced we don't know what it says or what it means. Mm. And, and so that began uh, in earnest a study of the Word of God along the way. Very shortly after that, 
I began doing work uh, with a small uh, group of volunteers who would do who uh, basically reached out to Jehovah's Witnesses for the purpose mm-hmm. of sharing the gospel with them, doing counter cult apologetics. Found that I really, really enjoyed it. For that, for me, that was not work. That was something. It was it was a joy to do. So uh, Walter Martin was still alive at the time, and I contacted him and had the opportunity to have a, a brief conversation with him. Told him that uh, you know I, I I really wanted to pursue this. He told me to you know pack everything up. My wife and I had, you know were in Seattle at the time and uh, moved back to Southern California, and we did. And I studied apologetics under Dr. Rod Rosenblatt at Christ College Irvine. That's wow. kind of the, the foundation there. And that and Walter Martin told me to do that. Now he died before we got there, but mm-hmm. uh, and so that that started me on this this journey. And uh, one of the things that uh, I was exposed to the fir- for the first time with the Lutherans was the was the proper distinction of what's called the law and the gospel, mm-hmm. and. And so, as a Nazarene, uh, it was all law, la 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 la, and um, <laughs> and always what you have to do, and rarely, if ever, did you hear what Christ has done for you. So there was an imbalance, and uh, where where your preaching and teaching that you're receiving is all law focused, it has a tendency to send people into kind of three different directions. Uh, one of those directions is utter despair, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not. I'm not pulling this off. the uh, The other direction is uh, is like self righteousness. You know, just you know, I'm better than you are, and the whole thing is just a complete facade because you know you're a fraud. Uh, you know, in the whole self righteous scheme, and what it does is it sets up this two tiered Christianity: uh, the the Christians who glow in the dark, who somehow are super holy, and then mm-hmm. every trying to figure out how the other group is pulling it off. And uh, and and so you know, that's one of the directions, or or you can you, you get into some kind of weird mysticism to kind of pull it off, and that's where my wife and I ended up in the charismatic movement. But all that being said, hearing law and gospel for the first time, I had never heard, in, in no joke, it, you know, if from seventh grade to you know my early college career, had never heard the gospel preached to me as a Christian, and wow. it blew my mind. And uh, I was very skeptical of it at first and couldn't believe that it was, you know, that the Bible taught that we are saved by grace through faith alone, apart from works. Uh, and it, this is all the work of God. Didn't believe it at all, was very skeptical of it, thought that if somebody believed this, that they would turn it into a license to sin. And, uh, you know, and Dr. Rod Rosenblatt was the guy who kept, you know, hammering this in each of the uh, each of the classes that I took from him. I remember one time, Going up to him after class and you know saying, Doctor Rosenblatt, if what you're saying is true that you know that I'm saved totally by what Christ has done, then you're saying I can do whatever I want. And I thought that this would be the thing that would like expose right, him. Right, right. But he is. <laughs> so he says to me, he says, "Well, of course, Chris." He says, "Now that Christ has set you free from slavery to sin, death, and the devil, what do you want to do?" <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh. So I, you know, the long story short, I came kicking and screaming into Lutheranism. But what? Uh, but after that, I I had a real heart to reach out to people who I knew were struggling with the same mm-hmm. same self righteousness, the same hypocrisy that I that I you know was you know experienced. And uh, and so uh, you know, uh, it, it, as a Lutheran, this is going to sound weird. I uh, I got a teaching gig at a Baptist church. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ask how that put, that came across. My my Lutheran pastor knew that uh, th- that they had asked me to come and teach, and he said, "Yeah, that's really subversive. Go for it. They won't let let you stay there very long, but you know they let me stay <laughs> for a few years." But <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I could put it. But uh, all of that being said, uh, one of the things I noticed. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed uh, Christian radio uh, and, you know, Christian talk radio in particular. And so in the uh, in, in the uh, really kind of starting at the end of the 90s, er, early on into the 2000s, th- there was like a noticeable switch, noticeable switch from uh, talk radio content that had that was theological, biblically robust, uh, thought provoking, challenging to stuff that was really kind of well <laughs> lacking any meat whatsoever mm-hmm. 
and uh and it, it it was noticeable it was you know you know one program would disappear and another would take its place it was like you know theology bible hour is now replaced with you know cooking with karen and it's like <laughs> here and and so uh at at that time i thought you know what uh you know i i began writing a blog in the mid 2000s and uh and thought you know maybe there's a way to uh to translate this into you know something that would be uh, along the lines of a radio program or something like that podcasting hadn't really uh taken off as any kind of a thing yet uh, although you know it was around that time that the 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 iPod came out and that was kind of changing everything and as far as how people were consuming uh, their talk uh, their talk radio, so uh, I I put together a pilot for a program called Fighting for the Faith and uh, and at the time I was uh, a, you know a corporate executive and I I, I called uh, one of the I called one of the major Christian uh, radio stations that was part of a broad national network shall we say and 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 uh, and one of the executives was more than happy to sit down and talk with me and, about my ideas and uh and so took him to lunch sat him down played a few samples of my program uh talked to him about what my ideas were for fighting for the faith and uh we didn't get too far into the into the conversation and he says no becky wouldn't like that Mm. And I said Becky, who's <laughs> Becky? <laughs> so he said, "Well, Becky is our target audience." And I said, "What?" <laughs> it's a, he says, "Yeah, Becky is uh, is a uh, is a married female. She's uh, between twenty nine and thirty one years old. She has two point four kids, and, and she needs stuff that's more practical and relevant to her life. And she really doesn't like." theological content and and or biblical conflict and, and stuff <laughs> like that. and so you know and he said now we'd be willing to you know to play your program but you know, you're not never going to make any money at it it's going to cost you a lot of money to to broadcast it and stuff like that they were always willing to do that and i was i was kind of upset after my lunch oh meeting. sure and and so um it was then that i started to think about a different idea so uh, streaming radio stations and podcasting were still fairly new, but I basically licked my pencil and wrote out a business plan uh, to launch my own radio station called Pirate Christian Radio. And the reason why it was called Pirate because I would, you know, a pirate station is one that broadcasts outside, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. established, uh, you know, uh, thing. And so I, you know, that that's how this all came about. Uh, and wow. So, and the name Pirate Christian Radio is is a protest against what has become, uh, you know, uh, radio Christian radio as opposed to what it used to be in the '90s, you know, and in the early 2000s. So, wow, that is awesome! I appreciate you walking through that journey, man. That that is amazing. Um, and uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know if we talked about this on the phone. I I, I also came out of the uh, charismatic movement, uh, NRA, uh, according to my air quotes, you can't see them, uh, the lineage, you know, uh, C. Peter Wagner mm -hmm. and, um, um, who's the guy, oh man, I forgot Chuck Pierce. Oh wow. And yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the stream I, I was connected to and Chuck Pierce ordained, uh, some apostles in his church and they, ordained me and my wife as apostles a couple of years ago. So, <laughs> wow. so you're, you're a repentant apostle. I am. I'm a repentant apostle. Yeah. I've actually had the privilege of uh, do, pretty much telling my whole story on Ms. Doreen's uh, YouTube channel okay. uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And that's why your YouTube just, it rings so clear. Um, and, and a, a, another funny thing, uh, Cause I love seeing um, uh, pastors that I used to like, I guess fanboy after, if that makes sense. Oh, um, yeah. I used, I used to love, you know, cause, cause my part of my story is, you know, I grew up an athlete and a musician. And so when I got saved, I thought the best uh, preachers were on TV, like the best athletes and musicians. And so that's what led me to the charismatic movement was 
looking at TV and, you know, seeing those guys on TV thinking that that was the highest level. So, uh, so that's how I got sucked in. Um, but, but I, I had to throw out here, man. Um, we actually, we're in Greenville, South Carolina. So we attended a uh, church where Ron Carpenter was a pastor. I was, oh. Wow. Yeah, I was I was in I was on that staff. My wife was on the marketing team. We were there. Um, and then Tavener, I know we always bring up Tavener. Tavener is a Ron Carpenter offspring. Um, so it's How always does yeah. that not surprise me? Wow. Yeah, he, yeah. Theological train wreck. He's got a little bit of Mormonism, he's got a little yep. steep verdict, he's got a little Gnosticism, and then and he hates yep. being uh theologically corrected. That's the best way I can put it. So yeah, yeah, no, I know Tavern. I remember when he was the youth, uh, quote unquote, youth pastor there, and and when they, you know, trained him up, and he was the next supposed to be the next big thing uh, before Ron went to uh, California. So, yeah, that you it's when I'm seeing that, I'm just I, I love it because it needs to be exposed. I share it every chance, every time I get a chance, and so I definitely wanted to make sure I was able to tell you that, uh, and to my listeners, uh, make sure they knew that as well. So. Right here, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Thankful Homemaker is a blog and podcast created to be an encouragement and blessing to each other in the role God has called us to as women. Thankful Homemaker provides truth-filled, gospel-driven encouragement to homemakers who amid their ordinary days desire to honor and glorify God in all things. Come visit thankfulhomemaker.com for the latest articles and podcasts. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or on your favorite podcast catcher. So ladies, pop in your headphones as you're doing dishes, cooking dinner, or folding laundry, and sit with me, host Marcy Farrell, as we chat together on how God's Word impacts everything we do as Christian women. All right, we're back in here with Pastor Chris Roseboro. And I I would my, my buddy Lee would get on me if I didn't bring up this question. The second half is usually kind of a, a lighter, funner, but I mean the whole thing is kind of light and fun if you ask me. But uh, my buddy Lee Lee Jones wanted me to to talk about uh the photography, man, those beautiful pictures that you be uh uh posting and 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 what where did that come from? Have you always been into photography and what where did that come from? Okay, so I took my first photography class when I was in junior high. I learned how to shoot on 35 millimeter cameras in black and white and used to develop mm. wow. my own photographs. Uh, but the problem is, is that uh, back in the day, well, that was an expensive uh, hobby. And after I got married, we had no money. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the best way I could put it, it wasn't, it wasn't until... The early 2000s when I, again, got a decent camera. And and always I've been hobbying in mm-hmm. photography. And, uh, and then uh, when uh, iPhones started putting really good cameras into their thing, I, I, I just went hog wild. Um, <laughs> so best way I could put it. And, and so, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a hobby that begins back in junior high and one that I dink with until maybe about 10 years ago, start taking it more seriously. And use my iPhone to really kind of teach me how to to set up good compositions. Uh, but then last year, uh, Pirate Christian Media, uh, we you know we decided to upgrade our camera system for the YouTube channel, and uh, and so I made sure that the camera that we were using would be able to do double duty, and uh, and got myself a, a really good Nikon uh, DSLR, and uh, and now you know so I. I spend, I purposely try to spend anywhere from an hour to two hours a day purposely working on my photography for this reason, is that the the heresy hunting that I do and the stuff that I watch and listen to, it's mm-hmm. really, really dark. And um, I don't, I don't, you know, talk about this other part, but uh, uh, I have a tendency to sometimes deal with depression. And I find that heresy hunting just sometimes can send me sideways. Right. And so by working on photography, what that does is it puts me into a different side of my brain. And when I'm when I'm working artistically like that, um, I'm able to turn off the heresy hunter for a little bit. And, you know, and so I consider heresy to be the greatest ugliness on the planet. 
uh, because it is a blaspheming of God's holy name and a twisting of his word, and it's the work of the devil, and it's very dark. Whereas photography allows me to go and hunt for the beauty that is in the world mm. and find a positive way to bring that forward. There's no, uh, it's, it's, the, it's just the theology of the beauty of God's creation. And so um, I purposely am now applying myself to hone skills so that I can, I can bring forth more uh, professional uh, looking and beautiful compositions. That's really the idea. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no. And they they are awesome. Um, I love them. Uh, and, and my buddy Lee, like I said, he's a, he's a big fan of them. Uh, so I had to make sure I asked that. So now to the bar signature questions. These are the qu- three questions I ask all of my guests. OK. And uh, the first signature bar question is what kind of music do you listen to? It depends on the time of the year. OK. <laughs> Okay, so uh, in the fall and in the winter, I am a classical music guy. Uh, mm-hmm. so cold with cooler weather, I, I just love, you know, so when I'm studying, when I'm working on a sermon, when I'm translating scriptures, uh, I love having classical music in the background. And, um, and I don't really have any particular favorite composers. Oftentimes, uh, I'll find myself really looking forward to the weekly update of the, uh, the A-list classical list that's mm-hmm. on Apple Music and yep. discovered so many good uh, 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 classical artists that way. And that, that's like my favorite thing. But then as we start getting into spring and things start to, to warm up, I go bluegrass. Uh, and then in the summer when it's uh, nice and hot and it reminds me of the beach, I, I go back to the 1980s. So I'm, I'm a Duran Duran YouTube, uh, YouTube kind of guy. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> nice. Nice. Good deal. All right. Next signature bar question is what book or books are you currently reading? Okay. Let me grab the stack. Hang on a second here. <laughs> it, it, see, I can't read one book at a time. That's Oh, that's, I know. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm currently uh, reading uh, Henry Eister, uh, Eister Jacobs, A Summary of the Christian Faith. I am also looking at James Livingston's uh, Modern Christian Thought. Uh, in the heresy category, uh, <laughs> I, uh, the, yeah, I'm reading a book called The Apostolic Revolution, and then I'm also working on a thing, uh, it, I'm working on some historical roots of what's called Lutheran pietism, and it's in pact on American evangelicalism. So I'm reading... Uh, Pia Desideria, as well as John Wesley's A Plain Account of Christian Perfectionism. And then, of course, that does not also exclude also the, the works that I'm reading in the Church Fathers. And uh, right now I am reading the sermons of Ambrose of Milan, which I find to be just fascinating. So that's kind of what I'm working on as far as my book reading is concerned. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I word that question that way because most people are the same way. They work through several at a time. So uh, I definitely get it. All right. Last signature bar question, and it should be interesting. What podcasts or sermons do you listen to, if any? OK, so um, my favorite podcast for almost two decades now is uh, the Issues Etc. podcast and Pretty much that's the only podcast that I have the time to listen to with all the other work that I'm doing. So that I, I don't mean to disappoint, but that that's kind of where I go to kind of keep a track on current affairs uh, as it relates to the church. And, and, uh, and they always have a good way of handling current news stories and things that are happening in the world. So nice. Issues Etc. is my go to podcast. Nice. Yeah, no, that's um that that makes sense. And that's why I, I worded that question that way, if any, because a lot of times when you uh pastor a church, uh content creator, um, you don't have a lot of time to consume podcasts. So I totally, totally understand that. Well, Chris, I really appreciate you coming on my show. This has been fun, it's been a blessing. Um, glad we're finally able to make it happen. And I love to uh, to end the show with give you an opportunity to address the listeners. Anything you want to share personal, uh, not personal, anything you want to share as far as encouragement or uh, uh, any words that you want to leave with my listeners before we get out of here. Sure. I, and, and so it is my greatest joy to always tell people of what Christ has done for them. 
And so uh, we as Christians, you know, we, we get knocked around and beaten up by our own sinful flesh, our own sinful decisions, the temptations of the world, as well as the temptations of the devil. It seems like the unholy trinity of our flesh, the devil, and the world have conspired to, to really knock our faith out of us. Mm-hmm. And there in which you, you might say to yourself or you might hear the devil whispering in your ear, there's just no way you're a Christian because I saw what you did. And I always like to tell people, listen, Christ has died for the ungodly, the scriptures say. And so when the devil reminds you that you are ungodly, you say yes. This is true, but that is also good news for me because Christ has bled and died for the ungodly. There are no sins that are not bled for and died for by Christ. And so I would always point you again and again that in him there is the forgiveness of sins. Scripture says, blessed is the man against whom the Lord does not count iniquity. And so we are blessed because God has forgotten our sins. They are bled for, died for, and as a result of it, heaven and eternal life are given as a gift. And so we recognize sin for what it is. It is slavery, and we recognize that Christ has set us free from slavery so that we can be forgiven and pardoned, and we have a hope of a new world all is a gift. So stop striving for it. Relax, believe. And <laughs> if you thinking, yeah, but I'm, I've sinned, say, yeah, of course you sinned. But if we say we have no sin, the scripture says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and, tre- and forgive us from all unrighteousness. So that being the case, Christ has bled and died for you, forgiven you of all unrighteousness. So relax, believe. You're his son, you're his daughter, and you have the gift of eternal life given to you. So receive it and believe and just relax. That's what I like to say. (laughs) I love it. I love it. That is awesome. Thank you again, Chris, for coming on the show. Definitely, definitely appreciate it. That was uh, great words of encouragement, and, uh, and and we're grateful. To the Bar listeners, appreciate you guys tuning in to your favorite podcast, The Bar Podcast, every Tuesday. Make sure you go to thebarpodcast.com. Make sure you go to thebargear.com to get some bar gear. And then make sure you check out Fighting for the Faith. I'll have all the links in the show notes. And uh, until next time, you guys, God bless, and we are out.